The Taxation of Trusts, Part 2 of 2. Section 7, Capital C, deals with loans between trusts and connected persons. So where a person disposes of an asset to the trust at market value, let's say listed shares of 1 million rand, and then the trust becomes the owner of the shares, but then the trust also owes the person that disposed of the shares a million rand. So there is no donations tax because there was no donation. Then that natural person that sold the shares, that loan will remain a million rand. The capital will never become more. So for estate duty purposes then, that million rand loan is freezed, whereas the listed shares in the trust now, the value can increase to say one and a half million rand or two million rand. So that person that sold the shares won't include that one and a half or two million rand in his or her estate for estate duty purposes, therefore saving estate duty. And if the loan to the trust does not bear any interest or low interest, then also income tax is avoided. So that's why this section was brought in to, to try and curb this situation. So 7C, Cap C applies to a natural person that provides a loan to a trust and they connected persons or a company that's connected to the natural person provides a loan to the trust. It also applies to a natural person or a company at the instance of the natural person that's connected to the company provides a loan to a company or subscribes for preference shares in that company in which a trust alone or together with connected parties to the trust hold at least 20% of the company's equity shares. So if this 20% requirement isn't met, then the section doesn't apply. And the consequences of Section 7C, Cap C, a loan that's waived or written off, there is no Section 11I bad debt deduction or no Section 11J provision for doubtful debt deduction. There will also be no 8th Schedule Paragraph 56 capital loss that can be claimed when the loan is written off. And the difference between the interest that's charged at the official rate, that SARS's official rate, and the actual rate is deemed to be the donation for donation tax purposes. So, say the loan was 3 million rand and the official rate's 5%, and there was no interest charged. So at the official rate, then the interest would be 150,000 Rand, which will be subject to donations tax. And if it's a natural person, there's that 100,000 Rand annual exemption. So the taxable portion then for donations tax will be 150 minus 100,000 equals 50,000, and that would normally be at 20%. So that will be your donations tax, 10,000 Rand. Then Section 7C does not apply in respect of the following loans that are made to or subject to approved benefit fund trusts or companies, business trusts or special trusts, it doesn't apply to a trust that has a primary residence in it and it is used as such, that primary residence, or to transfer pricing provisions, if that applies, Section 7 Cap C won't apply, and Sharia compliance financing arrangements, and if it's subject to dividend tax under Section 64E, Cap E, it won't apply and it doesn't apply to employee share incentive trusts. So section 7 capital D deals with the calculation of interest. So 
as long as that loan exists and it's low or no interest, Section 7 Cap C will keep on charging interest that will be deemed uh, donations. And it doesn't matter if the interest that's been charged exceeds the capital amount of the loan in the long term. So if the loan was a million rand and over the years interest has been ch charged as deemed donations and that exceeds a million rand already over all the years, that is irrelevant. It will just carry on. The nature of income in trusts, the conduit principle applies. That means the income that's received by a trust retains its identity. For example, local dividends, local interest, income of a capital nature, foreign income, it retains its identity. Then the distributions that are made to beneficiaries of the above income will be subject to the same exemptions as normal. For example, local dividends exemption, interest exemption, and foreign dividends exemptions will apply. But the income must be distributed in the same year that it was received by or accrued to the trust in order for that conduit principle to be valid. So that's very important. In local and foreign dividends, that are paid as an annuity will no longer receive an exemption. Local interest distributed as an annuity to residents will still have the exemption, the 23,800 or 34,500 rand exemption. Local interest distributed as an annuity to a non resident will no longer have the Section 10.1.H exemption, but they can still have the 23,800 or 34,500 rand exemption. And amounts distributed from retained income is of a capital nature. So if the person receiving that distribution of capital is a natural person, then that 40,000 rand annual exclusion will apply to the capital gain. And losses in a trust, beneficiaries with vested rights can claim tax deductible expenses and allowances. If there are no beneficiaries with vested rights, then the donor can claim the tax deductible expenses or allowances. If there are no beneficiaries with vested rights, or a donor, and the trust is subject to normal tax in South Africa, then the trust can claim tax deductible expenses or allowances. The beneficiaries and donor or donors, they must limit those deductions of theirs to the income that they have received or that accrued to them. So they can't create a loss and claim a loss in their personal names. The excess deductions and allowances of vested beneficiaries and the donor, that can be applied to the trust's taxable income. But the trust might also not create or increase an assessed loss the excess deductions and allowances of the trust must be carried forward to the following year, which can then again be applied by beneficiaries as deductions or allowances. Capital gains tax implications of trusts. In general, there is no 40,000 Rand annual exclusion for a trust, and the inclusion rate for a trust is 80%. And all capital gains tax rules apply. So those are the general anti-avoidance rules, connected person rules, and loss limitation rules. And the capital gain is either taxable in the hands of the trust 
the beneficiary or the donor. And a capital gain in a trust must be distributed to a beneficiary in the same year that that capital gain was made by the trust. The attribution rules, that is who will be taxed. So paragraphs 68 to 72 of the 8th schedule is equivalent to section 72 and 78 and it applies to capital gains, not losses. A loss can't be distributed to a beneficiary. A capital loss will remain available in the trust, which can then be carried over to the next year, and so on. So paragraph 68 deals with spouses again. There is no requirement that the spouse must be a resident. So if there is a capital gain distributed to a spouse and the other spouse is a donor, it will be taxed in the donor spouse's hands. Paragraph 69 is between parents and minor children. And there's no requirement for residency as well. So if a minor child gets distributed a capital gain by a donor parent, that parent will be taxed on that capital gain. And paragraph 70 deals with the condition or stipulation in a trust deed or so. Then here the donor must be a resident. And if there is such a condition and there was a capital distribution, then the donor will be taxed on it. Paragraph 72 is between the donor and a non-resident, and the donor must be resident. So if a cattle gain gets distributed to a non-resident and there was a donor, then that donor will be taxed on that capital gain. But this concludes the presentation for trusts. Thank you.